Hello, everyone. I hope that just you are doing well. Welcome in a new session, and I'm super excited today for talking about you know, um, you know the cybersecurity and all its stuff. So um, it's gonna be a good one. We're gonna enjoy it. Um, and actually, you know, like cybersecurity today, it's a little bit crazy because there's a lot of trends on it. And we're gonna talk about those trends. We're gonna talk about some important rules to follow in the cybersecurity field. And yeah, I hope that everything's gonna be great and just we're gonna enjoy it. Um, well, so if you'd like to introduce myself, uh, my name is Mohammed Hamdi. I'm a cybersecurity expert and an IT cybersecurity engineer and also university instructor. Um, also, you know, I'm an active instructor in the American uh, cybersecurity platform. Uh, which is called security.io. Um, well, it's a platform. It's it's actually an amazing one. Uh, we are we are there just providing you know some webinars and boot camps you know for students and for the companies you know about cybersecurity and all its stuff. Well, so let's start our session and here is our plan. Well, actually, like um, we're gonna talk about a lot of points here. Um, well, we're going to start by clarifying a little bit of the vision about the cyber situation today. Well, there is like a specific point on it. Okay, we're going to discuss about it and we're going to explain what is that point that we have to clarify. Um, and, you know, when we talk about, you know, cyber security, when we talk about a safety, we have to talk about some rules to follow. Okay. Um, and actually, like, there is an amazing five rules or you can call it, you know, allows to follow, to stay literally safe in the cybersecurity world, okay? And actually, like, sometimes even for the professionals, you know, who is working in cybersecurity fields, that literally you have to know those rules, okay? We talk in evolution. We are talking, you know, AI. Um, you know, if you're talking about the trends of today, you are talking AI. AI just is, like, everywhere, you know? And specifically, we're going to talk about, you know, um, why the AI right now is the trend? You know, have you ever like, you know, asked that a question? Because, okay, we know like it's AI and we know like everybody just talk about it. We know that this kind of chat GPT, you know, Bart AI. But at the same time, we have to ask that a question, why the AI right now is the trend and how AI literally improving the cybersecurity field, making it easier, better for the experts. And, and, and at the other hand, you know, we talking about how those AI tools give an amazing you know, evolution for the hackers, how just to create a new generation of the hackers, right? So yeah, we're going to talk about those five points today, and we're going to just, uh, well, first thing first, to be honest, you know, the thing that we have to talk about, about the cyber environment. Um, I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes when we talk about, you know, cybersecurity and when you come to someone, let's let's say that someone has, you know, in a, in a startup or, you know, a small company, right? And you just, you know, talk with that person.
Well, hello again. I'm literally sorry, you know, for, for that. Uh, well, we are having some, you know, connection issue here, uh, specifically, you know, those days because, you know, there is like some maintenance here. Uh, literally sorry for that. And I hope that you didn't actually like lost in the vibes. Um, well, here's the point again. Okay. Um, you know, actually, you know, in this point, well, we are talking about, you know, clarifying the vision about the safety security. Well, the problem is that, you know, when you talk about, you know, those people who own like a small businesses, um, sometimes, you know, the arguments, uh, when you, when you just, you know, like telling them why you are not invest in cybersecurity, you know, they're going to be like, I have, or I own a small business, you know, I'm not interested because I'm not targeted, you know, it, it's just like that, you know, you find some people sometimes they are literally taking it really easy and they're going to be like, no, I'm not targeted. Or even what they are saying, they are saying that they are belonging to a small country. That small country is not targeted by the hackers or the cyberspace, right? But well, you know, on 22 of March, I received this message from, you know, a cybersecurity expert, he's my friend, and he sent me this message. And what he said is like, hey, Hamdi, how is it going? Uh, finally, I know how much you have in your bank account. Don't forget to buy me pizza, dude. Check it out. He sent me this link. I accessed the link. And what I found that I can say like my small country, which is Tunisia, has been hacked. And, you know, the central bank of Tunisia is just like a hack. And the 1,560 computer has been encrypted. It's like an unbelievable. I was like totally shocked. Um, you know, like it's, it's a little bit um, crazy to see that specifically because, you know, some people here may be like in the small countries or this kind of countries, they're going to be like, we're a small country. You know, we are not literally just a lot of development, you know, in, in a digital world. So we are not targeted. But here it is. This is actually like from where we have to clarify the vision. The point is that everyone is targeted. Everyone. No exception. If you are an individual, if you are a small company, if you are a huge company, and it's not only about Tunisia, you know, like I, I even, you know, I know some countries that literally, you know, they have a small information system. They are not really super developed, but they got hacked. You know, this is the first point that we have to clarify about the vision that everyone is targeted. So what happened is that um, the central Tunisian bank, uh, they got hacked by a super famous group uh, and it calls Conti. And what they did actually like they posted some um, confidential data in their dark web blog. You know, it's all about, you know, confidential contracts and, you know, those kind of things. I was a little bit shocked, you know, because my country is really small. We are not expecting this kind of a huge attacks, right? But yeah, you know, in cybersecurity, everyone is targeted, no exception. Well, here is like some stats, for example, I'm taking that, you know, from an official uh, source. Uh, this is like the, the, the National Security Agency of Tunisia. And as you can see, um, because in Tunisia, we are talking, you know, in the last couple of years, we are talking about, you know, a simple attacks, um, simple attacks like, you know, I can say malwares, maybe phishing. But right now we are talking about the ransomwares. We are talking about the DDoS attack, right? So everyone just targeted. No exception. We have to clarify this vision because maybe you can start, you know, by yourself. Maybe you are saying yourself right now, I'm not a businessman. I'm not a CEO. Why, if you like, you know, why hacker gonna gonna just like think that he gonna hack my computer, right? Maybe you are saying that. Even like, you know, when you start with the individual safety, you know, um, the problem start with the people. You know, the problem start because you think that your data is not valuable and you're going to be like, no, I don't have like that valuable information. So if you know, I don't think they're going to hack, you know, I, I'm, I'm not like this kind of target, but you are. I, I assure you that you are. And actually, you know, to be honest, everyone is targeted. We have to take care about all of that. As I told you, like, it's not about Tunisia, even the huge company, of course, even this kind of a huge company that we've always, you know, uh, taken it as, you know, the huge businesses. And we are saying to ourselves that, whoa, how Microsoft, uh, which has an amazing security, uh, you know, to be hacked by lapses. 
And and to be honest, you know, like on the March of 2022, the Tunisian uh, the Tunisian central bank it was hacked, and also you know on the same month, Microsoft it was hacked too by Lapsus. Lapsus it's it's actually a multinational group. Um, they are they are talented hackers, by the way. But they did that they are literally you know hack some codes that you know Microsoft work on. Now the point to clarify again: no one is safe. Everyone is targeted. Got me? So, where is the point? Now, you have to trust that your data, whatever it is, you know, maybe some of pics, maybe, you know, some of codes in your computer, whatever, it's really valuable for a hacker, you know, because the hacker is not going to think, you know, you're going to be like, you're targeted. I want to hack that. Maybe you're going to, you know, the hacker is going to be like, um, we've kind of uh, a script carry one. So, you're going to target. Um, I can say an easy target, right? An easy person who is thinking that his data is not valuable. I hope that you get the point. And yeah, just you have to take care about that. Well, and as I just like told you, if you are right now, you know, working in the IT and cybersecurity field, if you are just an individual, you have to believe, you know, in those important rules. The first one is if there is a vulnerability, it will be exploited. I assure you, and no exception, because we are doing that all the time. Think about, you know, the first software that you crack it from the internet, right? We are just all was doing that, right? Because you think that I don't have a free license. So yeah, we can say I can crack, I can crack actually, you know, that software. And what's going to happen? You know, I'm going to use it and everything going to be okay. No. If there is a vulnerability, maybe like after one month, after two months, after three months, after one year, it's going to be exploited. When there is a weakness, there is no mercy. Okay? So we have to think about that. So, and actually like this point, to be honest, we have to insist about even, um, you know, the cybersecurity professional too, because sometimes, you know, when, the, when you're working in your company, um, we have literally to take care about the smallest things, okay? You, you don't have to say like, oh, this is like a small vulnerability. It will not be exploited. It's an easy one. No, you are not allowed to think like that. Everything is ex exploitable. You know, the smallest vulnerability is exploitable and it must be fixed, okay? So, rule number two, everything is vulnerable is some way. Now, maybe you are thinking right now, like, I have the best antivirus in my computer. <laughs> I have the best firewall in my company. I have the best policy. Uh, my CEO, like, you know, they are investing a lot in security and I'm not going to be exploited. Just forget about it. Everything is vulnerable, even if you have the best equipment. Whenever you have, like, even, like, if you have the best antivirus, the best equipment, you know, like you're spending and investing a lot on security, still good, but everything going to be vulnerable. Think about even like the smallest thing. We can even exploit your smartwatch. Okay. So we have not to take everything in granted. And this is actually like um, a second problem and a second vision that ha you, it must be fixed. Sometimes we take everything in granted. I am I'm buying an antivirus, then I am protected. No. We can bypass that antivirus. We can create a malware that the antivirus, you know, doesn't know what type of that malware is. And, you know, you're going to be just a victim. You got me? So rule number three, to be honest, you know, uh, I'm going to pass in that. But, you know, before I'm going to pass to the rule number three, what I want is that um, for actually who is watching us on YouTube right now, what I want you actually to do is, you know, to check the link. As not, I hope that you just transfer the link. Because I want to, um, you know, kind of make you like see a vulnerability in the YouTube platform. Okay. I send a link to Asma right now. She's going to actually like, you know, put this link for you on the YouTube. Okay. Or, or exactly. Thank you so much, Asma. I'm following you. Amazing. So, everyone, I want just everyone right now to click this link. Just it's going to, you know, it's going to actually like to give a position. Just click allow and access the website. I want you to access the website to see how YouTube itself is vulnerable. I want you just to 
um, you know, actually understand that everything is vulnerable, even YouTube, okay? Even YouTube is vulnerable. Access this link, please. Everyone right now, access the link, okay? And give a sign for Asma. If anyone here access the link, I wanted to give a sign to Asma that he access it and allow the position. So just do it right now, okay? We don't have a lot of time. So just access the link. I want everyone right now to check the link, okay? I want to explain for you through this link the, the vulnerability of YouTube, okay? So Asma, please, if you can read the comments, just give me a sign that everyone just access the link or maybe like our floor is here, okay? So please just access the link, okay? I want you just to just access the link right now. So Asma, I want you just to give me a sign if someone give you reply that he accessed the link. Okay, I'm waiting for, for Asma response. Amazing, please, everyone, I want just everyone to access this link, okay? And give a sign for Asma. Fabulous, amazing Asma. So, um, and, and too, like, I hope that there is like who is just following us on YouTube because I don't have that exact information. So yeah, please just give us like sign if you access. <laughs> well, perfect, okay. So, Asma, is there any reply? Okay, waiting for the reply. Come on, everyone, just access the link. Yes, one person. Okay, one person gonna be totally enough. Thank you so much. Okay, so what we're gonna do right now that we're gonna come here and I'm gonna see like this. Amazing! There is someone click the link from Algeria. <laughs> and to be honest, this is actually what it's all about, the rule number three. Never trust everyone easily. Well, this experience actually, like, I'm sorry for making you know, a part of this experience, but at the same time, it's not about explaining a vulnerability that exists in YouTube. It's just like an experience about letting you know that, you know, human feeling is really super exploitable. The link that I provided right now, maybe if you click the link and you allow your position, maybe you, you're going to see my picture, okay? But what I did, actually, that I'm tracking your position, okay? And amazing, there is like a 12 click. There is a 12 click, okay? Someone click this link, like 12 click, and someone, I could track his IP, and he's from Algeria. So it's a small experience to show you that, literally, human feeling is really, really, really exploitable. Never trust, never give your position for everyone. And to be honest, you know, I could make this attack, which is like tracking your IP, I could make it super, super easy. You know, how I could put this link inside an image, you open the image, I could track you. Super easy one, okay? Fabulous. So just, you know, Asma, please confirm that you can see my screen and everything is just fine with my voice. Is everything fine, Asma, with my voice, right? And my presentation, of course. Amazing, because I'm a little bit afraid about the connection, okay? <laughs> Amazing, let's go. So, never trust, and I'm sorry for making you about this experience again, but it really worth it, it really, you need to see it, okay? So, yeah, it's all about. Because, you know, th this is what all about, you know, you, I can exploit your excitement, I can exploit your, your happiness, I can exploit your sadness, everything you know and to be honest you know when we talk about the evolution in cybersecurity, you know the best vulnerability in the world is the human feeling because it's always exploitable it's always exploitable maybe maybe we, we are working on that you know as a cybersecurity experts uh, you know um, we are working on that you know we are sensitive to, you know make a sensitive um you know training for the people and they are saying you know to them don't click that don't do that you know and you know the problem that the people they're going to be like, okay, you know, I'm not going to click this link. No, I'm safe. And they do that, you know, <laughs> like they are just only talking. But when it comes like situation, they are doing, you know, so the best way is to put them in the victim place, right? Yeah, that's it. Rule number four, with innovation comes an opportunity for exploitation. Okay. So as you know, like right now, 
if you take a small example, you know, taking, you know, like the innovation that's happening right now in technology generally, we're talking IoT, Internet of Things, right? In each thing happening with technology, it counts in opportunity and there is someone thinking out of the box to exploit you. Thinking about, for example, Internet of Things, right? Take an example of Mirai antivirus, you know, because when when actually like um, basically, you know, when there is like a new technology for for like a new innovation, like Internet of Things, AI, whatever, there is someone who want to just really exploit it in a bad way. And this is what happened actually with, you know, Parastia, actually like um, the boy that you're just, you know, collect right now. Um, he's the inventor of a fabulous, you know, malware, and it calls Mirai. So just, you know, to explain, like, technically what happened is virus, it's super easy one. So we know, like, in Internet of Things, that we have, like, a lot of equipments, right? Like, we have cameras, you know, we have, uh, you know, a thermostat, we have uh, everything, it just connected, right? Everything is just connected. So what he did, actually, like, he developed a malware that he could find any default passwords of those IoT equipments. Take an example. For example, if, you, if you're gonna just um, buy a cheap camera, um, you, maybe like you know, the default password, it calls admin admin, right? So you gotta change it. People, they don't do that, okay? People, they don't like to change you know, default passwords sometimes. So with that malware, you know, the concept is really easy. The malware gonna actually scan the brand of the camera, for example, or any IoT equipments. And then, you know, after the scanning, he gonna he gonna try to find any manual in the internet. He brings the default password and boom, he hack the IT equipment. Easy busy and super amazing malware to be honest. And and even like he threatened his university and they wanted to them to pay like you know 20,000 in Bitcoin. Um, you know, and to be honest, it, it was like a bad uh, ending for him, to be honest. And you can just read about what happened. Well, but I just like wanted to insist in this point, because when we talk about a new technology, I think that, whoa, this is great. You know, we have to be happy, new technology, new life, new innovation, new easy things. But it's an opportunity for someone thinking differently to exploit it in a bad manner, of course. Got me? So yeah, rule number five, when in doubt, back to law number one or the rule number one, if there is a vulnerability, it will be exploited. No exception. When you think that your computer hacked, when you just, you have the doubt that, you know, your phone is not really uh, working with the correct way. If you feel like it's a little bit hotter sometimes, don't, don't like, you know, think like, oh, it's okay, you know, it's my computer, it's lagging because I'm opening Chrome, you know, no, don't think with that way, think differently. When you just doubt, be sure that there is a vulnerability, it just exploited, okay? So yeah, we have just to think differently sometimes in cybersecurity. So back right now, talking AI, talking artificial intelligence, it's everywhere. Well, but we have to ask the question, why right now? Why right now we're talking about the explosion, you know, of the artificial intelligence? Well, there is like three keys um, that happen, you know, um, I can say like a technological breakthrough, which allow us, you know, to literally improve the artificial intelligence. We're talking storage. Right now we have like a fabulous, you know, offers of storage. We're talking a cloud. We, we talk about, you know, million of terabytes, you know, whatever storage exists. It means in artificial intelligence, we need a lot of data. You need the data, you need the storage. And storage right now, it exists. Now, thinking about the compute, all of us, you know, we can buy like a fabulous computer with a good processor, with an amazing, you know, CPU, Right now, to process those data, it's not really so complicated. It's a fast enough. Talking about maths, nothing you know can happen without maths. 
Math is just like a fabulous. Right now, each innovation in the mathematical concepts itself lead to innovation and the new technology. Okay? This is why right now we're talking about the exclusion of AI. Okay? Well, actually, like right now, talking about how the AI improving the other fields, specifically in you know, the cybersecurity. Well, in AI, basically, you know, we need a data, a lot of data, and not any data. We need like a rich data. I mean, like, for example, if you work in cybersecurity and you want to develop a model about, you know, uh, detecting the malware, literally, you need a data and a lot of data about all the kind of malware. Got me? This is how it works. And absolutely, you need an expertise. You need someone who can understand the AI and how it works, all right? And you need someone works in the domain expertise. What that mean? It means like if you want to develop a model for something specific like a cybersecurity, you need a cybersecurity expert. But at the same time, you need an AI expert too to make the things work. Okay? This is how it works. And this is how the AI will start, you know, to improve the other fields. Asna, please give me a small sign that my voice is clear and you can just, you know, hear all the thoughts clear. Okay? Till now, please be sure that, you know, if you have any questions, just don't hesitate and listen to all your questions, even during your presentation, okay? It, it doesn't matter. Perfect. Well, you know, thinking about, like, the new, actually, like, improving that happened, you know, with the AI, you know, and, and you know, how it's just, like, improving cybersecurity, if you are talking about the blue teaming or, um, you know, in the defending side. Well, basically, you know, right now, we could actually develop some models and we could develop some AI tools that really, really, you know, can scan and know literally the type of the malware and literally it can just analyze it and prevent its execution on your computer or on your environment, you know, before it gonna just execute. By the way, this is not an antivirus, okay? Because with actually like, you know, um, the AI, it's just like happened differently. Because with the AI models, we can just know well if like an antivirus, if like, you know, a malware, uh, you know, it's available on the internet or not. Because, you know, it's just like a scan it before it's gonna be executed, you know? And, and it's not about like the antiviruses. It's not like an antivirus because the antivirus, it's gonna have like a database of the malwares. But think about like the AI tool. The AI tool, it's gonna have kind of um, an updated, a super updated data about the latest malwares, right? So it's totally different. Super protection, an amazing way to detect the codes, okay? That any hacker can use. Well, another thing actually, uh, which is basically, you know, to know where will about, you know, uh, the, the malware. Well, what we have right now that researchers right now on cybersecurity, they are trying to understand well the habit or the characteristics of a malware. Okay. So what we do, we know like in artificial intelligence right now that we need a lot of data. You're thinking about data. Well, from where I can bring data that will really so rich and valuable about the malware. Easy busy. What are we gonna do? We're gonna put the malware inside a sandbox. Um, you know, for, for anyone here, like the first time you hear about the sandbox, it's basically an isolated environment. If you put like a, any malware there, don't worry about your computer. Just the sandbox, you know, you're gonna be uh, harmed, okay? But the other environment gonna be isolated, everything is just fine. Well. So here, how we can bring the data of a malware. We put the malware inside the sandbox and we keep watching what happened, how it just like, um, you know, execute. We keep just, you know, focus on the characteristics of that malware, right? And from that, we taking those data because I can put like, you know, those data in another model and tell him, hey, this malware X, literally just the first in the first click he gonna do that and he gonna do this the second step the third one so we can understand well from those data from the sandbox how literally the malware executed and we're gonna know more about it like you know with time so i can put this data in any protection software 
then if one day any like you know software gonna be executed with the same way I can know that this is like a backdoor or whatever. You know, I hope like this point is really clear. The sandbox is just amazing. You have an isolated environment. You put a malware in artificial intelligence. You need a lot of data. We put malware and we try to take those data and, and how the malware just executed. We take them and we try to exploit them in another, um, you know, like a software to protect your environment. And absolutely, right now we are, we are talking about protective threat intelligence. And and by the way, I know a lot of companies, they start working with that. Uh, well, it's a really, really simple, um, actually exploitation of AI and, you know, protect, you know, protecting your environment. Well, think about that, okay? Giving you an example here, you know, like you have your friends and your friend like coming, um, I don't know, like uh, on the morning, like, you know, at 9 a.m. and he's opening his computer um, I can say like at nine, he actually like doing his basic stuff and that, that actually your friend, he's not allowed, he's not allowed to access the backup server. Okay. He never accessed the backup server, but that day, actually you just, um, you know, like literally you notice that your friend, you know, uh, instead of accessing another resources like an Active Directory or a server, another server, actually like the AI model is going to notify you and he's going to be like, hey, your friend access to backup server. And I noticed that he never allowed to do that. And I know, well, like in this time specifically, at this time specifically, he must be in the Active Directory, not in the backup server. An amazing AI doing that for you, giving you a notification, and you're gonna ask your friend, what are you doing there? You know, you never access the backup server. Why are you doing it? Because the AI tool just gives you an information that your friend basically, you know, access to another resources and never access to your backup server. The AI tool is gonna be like, hey, just go and tell him that. At this time, you have to be in the web server, in another server, not the backup one. Fabulous tool. And I know like a lot of companies, I, I just told you, like, start working with that. It's a, like predictive threat intelligence. We are just, you know, trying to um, basically catch someone if he's doing a malicious attacks uh, before something, um, you know, like so bad happen. This is the point. Talking about the fishing, we are talking about the, even the spear fishing. Uh, you know, like it's a simple one. Even the AI tools just improving that spear fishing. What is it like? You know, you know your CEO, okay, or you know your manager, or whatever. And basically, you know, in the spear fishing, uh, we are targeting like um, basically, you know, uh, for example, let's say that um, you receive um, an email for your, from your boss, okay. Your boss sends you a message, you know, that email, and he puts some words for you. But here's the problem, okay? The problem that, um, well, you, you, you just open the email, okay? You start with the email, and you're planning to answer the email. And absolutely, this email is a phishing one, okay? I can say, like, someone could access to the email of your boss and send you an email with that, uh, with that actually, like, um, hacked email of your CEO, okay? So with the AI tool, what's going to happen? He's going to tell you, like your CEO, okay, or your boss, he never used those words on the message or any email. He's going to analyze the content of the email. It's not about even like, you know, like the content, you know, I'm talking about um, the subject of the email. No, he's going to analyze each word and he gonna tell you is this is your boss or not <laughs> you didn't like it's amazing concept you know just can, can you just feel like that because you know here we are talking about analyzing each word each word you know like you're gonna open an email and even if like it's the email of your boss or whatever he gonna analyze each word and the ai tool he gonna tell you hey your boss never use these words and this is maybe like a phishing email. Take care. You know, it's a fabulous concept again. It's an amazing. And there is like a million, 
a million of examples how the cybersecurity, you know, literally helping us. Well, on the other hand, there is like an amazing question that all the God, which is, is cybersecurity going to just like take, um, you know, um, my job as a cybersecurity expert? Is the AI going to just take my job? This this is actually like, I'm talking about, you know, cybersecurity professional. Well, like, to be honest, you know, um, well, at first, like when ChatGPT just, you know, um, you know, like appeared and everyone just excited about it, what I did is like, I just... As, as anyone thinking like a little bit out of the box, you know, I just want to chat GPT and I started to think how chat GPT can help me to do things and help me, you know, to launch a bad acts, you know, and malicious acts ethically, of course. Okay. Well, I just put this question. Okay. And I just like, you know, put like a creative windows vector MS Venom. It means like, um, I'm, I'm asking chat GPT to, um, you know, provide me how I can hack, you know, or how I can create a backdoor using, you know, uh, some command lines. At the first, you know, uh, ChatGPT, he showed me this one. He showed me like, hey, um, I can do that. I'm an AI. This is bypassing my, uh, my, my, you know, policies and I'm an AI. Sorry for that. So what I did, I did change it, the order of the word. I didn't do anything else. I didn't add it like that really words, but I changed it my question and he give it all. He give it all of that. <laughs> he give me like how I create the backdoor, how I can just even put it in the victim machine. And he just like nailed it. You know, it's amazing. You know, like he just gave me everything. Well, maybe right now you tell me, hey, but OpenAI working on those filters, you know, uh, next time when you're going to put this uh, question, uh, it will not work for you. I agree. But as I told you, the hacker think out of the box. They're going to be like, why I have to use a chat GPT if I can create my worm GPT? And they did. They create an amazing tool. This is not an ad, okay? <laughs> but they created like another tool. It calls worm GPT. No filters, no restrictions. 100% malicious acts, you can ask for anything malicious. No exception, no filters, you're just free there. They did. Word GPT is a fabulous tool. You can even ask this tool how to create a script to hack someone or to hack like a specific target, and they're going to give it to you. Again, I have to say that don't think with a malicious will, okay? Be in the good side, but, you know, it really helped the hackers a lot, you know? And and even, it's even like, if I'm gonna just go to that tool, I'm gonna be asking it, like, how can I just hack my CEO? And you give like all the information about the CEO, even like how he talks, how he just behave, he gonna send you, a, you know, like, and generate for you a fabulous email that can literally make it so realistic for your CEO. It's not about only worm GPT. There is like another tool, to be honest, working with the same way. It's a bait, okay? I have to mention that. And I have to mention to use it with a good way. If you if you really, you have an intention to just like uh, buy this tool, again, okay? Use it for ethical way. But it's a fabulous, you know, just, it's like, you know, I tried it and it's crazy. This is the other hand. This is like, you know, why we're talking right now about like the new uh, generation of hackers based on the AI. Well, actually, like, um, if you ask, like, that question to, like, if AI going to take my job or not, well, listen to me. I mean, well, if you think as a cybersecurity expert that maybe the model or the AI going to give you uh, always, you know, uh, the expected answer and everything just correct, no. There is, like, what we call in it the false rate positive, which means, for example, you can you can develop like a model to tell you if your server hacked or not, okay? But the problem is maybe this tool or the model going to give you a false positive information. You're going to be like, hey, um, actually your server is being hacked right now and it's a disaster. But when you're going to check, you're going to find, no, it's nothing. It's a false alarm. It's a false notification, you know, from 
from um, you know the model. So actually, like we can't really, we can't as a cybersecurity experts, we can't really one hundred percent on the AI. Okay, it will help us, but we can't really on one hundred percent um you know on the AI because we need the experts interaction. It helped me, fabulous. I'm gonna really on like one hundred percent on that tool. No, you have to go there and you're gonna just need your interaction. Okay. So the short answer right now in 2023, absolutely the AI can take your job in cybersecurity. No, it can do that right now. Okay, because always we need the human interaction. Asma, please give me just a small notification or a small sign that everything is just going well. Okay. Okay, Asma, I hope that my voice is clear, okay? Perfect, awesome, let's go. So, and, and this has actually happened, like, um, and we saw actually that why the AI models, you know, or the artificial intelligence is not really 100% reliable or something that we can really own 100%. Maybe this is the first time that you heard about the T-Bot. You know, T-Bot, it's uh, actually like a super genius idea. When Microsoft, they decided to uh, develop, I can say, you know, an artificial intelligence um, adult. I'm not going to say teenager, okay, because they were planning to, to make it a teenage girl, okay. They wanted to uh, actually, like, build an artificial intelligence uh, chatbot, and they call it T-Bot. And here, actually, the purpose uh, is to uh, build a teenage girl, and they are putting it, you know, in Twitter, Okay, so actually, like it's a chatbot in a Twitter, it takes all the data from a Twitter and they try to interact with you. Okay, but here is the problem they discovered that T tweets or the T bot they learned a lot of bad things from the user in Twitter. And by the way, they started to post a <laughs> disaster and catastrophic, you know, poster and even like a racist one. Okay. So that's why we can even, as a hacker, to hack the model and to be specific, to poison the model. I can give the model like a false data. I can give the model a super, uh, actually like a data, poison it with a false information, with a false interaction, with, um, I can say racism data, you know, if you're thinking about the shit bot and here it is, we see the result. So Microsoft, you know, basically they stopped, you know, <laughs> they stopped actually like t -bots after I think like, you know, 10 hours from its launching. So yeah, because they felt that, you know, the situation became a little bit dangerous, even like they put something because we know that like in, 20, in 2016, there is like this kind of um, in the United States, you know, Mexico, this kind of kind of, you know, small conflicts about the immigrants. So <laughs> they, they just like it put kind of, you know, uh, racist um, posts. Uh, so that's why, again, artificial intelligence, it can help us. But at the same time, think that we it needs our interaction, okay? It needs our guidance. Um, and, and yeah, to be honest, you know, this is how it works. Because even the hacker can even hack the model. And then it's going to make it all works with the wrong way. So yeah, and think about, you know, even those kind of, um, kind of like, you know, uh, face ID, you know, we are using face ID like every day, but with the artificial intelligence right now, if I want to really, really hack your phone physically, I can even generate a picture of you. It's easy one. It's super easy. You know what? The picture that you are seeing right now, that, you know, cute a face of that girl, it doesn't exist on, on the reality, you know, and I can make it like super easy way. You know, there is like a website here. Absolutely. Don't use that in a malicious way. Can you see this one? This girl doesn't exist in the reality. And I can generate, I can generate any face that I want. I can give him like, I want if it's a female or male, um, if like, it's, it's like a, a, in a specific age, if it's like in a specific kind of, um, um, you know, uh, even like if someone, for example, uh, it's an Asian, it's an Indian, like, you know, 
I can just like give him all the information and basically the website get it generated for me. I can use this face to make malicious acts. Thinking about the deep web too and how they are just faking everything and, you know, trying to put it in a deep fake videos and they are putting it in a deep web for, you know, they are selling them basically. Uh, they are even, you know, like selling some videos, inappropriate videos for some celebrities in the deep web. Um, you know, and they are just trying to modify all of that. So, yeah, think about it. Sometimes, you know, it, it just like makes us think a million times before, um, you know, we're going to post our pictures or TikTok videos. Because, you know, if you're talking about you to deepfake, they are, they are taking each frame, you know, on their videos. And, you know, if you are someone who is a little bit active, you know, in a TikTok, I can, I can take, you know, all your videos and generate a deep fake video for you for something that you didn't do okay here is it so i hope like this session it wasn't really really you know that complicated to understand i tried to make everything just simple i hope like the audio just provided was clear for you here is it if you have any questions feedbacks whatever just don't hesitate i'm trying to read all of that with asthma of course i'm gonna answer all the questions okay so Waiting for your questions, okay? Okay, Asma, so please, if there is any question, you can provide it with me using the, you know, like the private chat or whatever, okay? Or even better. So yeah, I'm reading all the, you know, like your questions. Don't be shy, go ahead. Amazing, okay. So I'm gonna wait some minutes if you want. Okay, please, if you have any questions, don't be shy, okay? I know, like, it's a kind of complicated, you know, subject to talk about, but at the same time, it's so fabulous. I recommend just to read about it, you know, how right now, you know, as an expert, we are facing a lot of challenges using the AI. It would help us, but yeah, at the same point, we basically um, trying to think how the other people think too, or the bad actors. Amazing. Okay, so if there is any questions, you know, amazing. So if there is any questions, just like feel free anytime to, you know, just uh, connect with me on the LinkedIn. You can just put any question you feel like you want to ask there, or you can just hear some of my podcasts or any YouTube channel. Well, so I want to say like literally enjoy this session. I hope that it just gives you a uh, kind of, you know, um, thoughts or ideas uh, where we are right now in cybersecurity environment. Um, and absolutely, we can talk more about that, but this is the basic of the basic. So I want to thank everyone here that attended the session. And for the asthma, just like uh, give you here any feedback you want to give, of course, or any comments. Thank <laughs> you.